Welcome to the category of sliding semi-truck. Uh, just semi-truck. This one just happens to slide. It's a slippery truck. Oh, this was a category that caused all kinds of problems this, this season, but we're going to disregard those problems and just look at how good are these guys? All right, we have quite the crew. We have a large subset of semis from Duke Farming. Um, in fact, most of these are from Duke Farming. And then we have two out of the Cat Pack. We have a Kenworth and an Actros. So let's jump in here. Um, hmm. I say jump in and then I'm like, uh. All right. So I'm going to give a mention. And that's just purely... Remember what a mention is. A mention is just purely, meh, it's here. Uh, there's nothing terribly functionally wrong with it, but it's not super great. I'm going to give a mention to this, which is the, uh, what is this thing? The W900L. I'm going to give a mention to the, what was this thing? No, it wasn't this thing. Was it this? No, it wasn't that one either. Uh, must have been this one. It must have been the Peterbilt. Freight liner. <laughs> Freight liner dare. Uh, the Freightliner, a mention here to the uh, International 9300, uh, a mention also for the, what does this say, Western Star. <sighs> so those guys get mentions. Um, I had real problems with this truck. I'm going to give it a mention too because it's still functional. Um... Yeah, that gets a mention. That gets a, basically everything in the Duke Farming just gets a mention with the exception of two. There is this Kenworth 1960. Um, the interior drives me absolutely batty and it is black on black with more black. But I'm going to give it an honorable mention because it's a functional truck and I love, love the startup sound. I just love that sound. It's neat. So... I'm going to give that one an honorable mention. I'm also going to give an honorable mention to the Kenworth Bullnose. Um, it's nearly there. It's it's nearly to award. I love the fact that I can look through here and, like, see stuff. I mean, yes, I can see that ghosting back of the dashboard, but, you know, small things. But I can look through all kinds of little slots and see things. You can look through there and see the engine almost. Um, and it's it's a solid vehicle. Uh, I do know why, after talking to Duke, I do know why we have this nose out here. It's actually the weight to keep the truck straight. Um, I wish it wasn't there, but, you know, whatever. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to give an honorable mention because I like it. I think it's a neat, old, old truck. Um, it serves well in the yards. Uh, without that nose, it would serve even better because then I could get close. So there we go. Uh, mentions for almost all of Duke's vehicles except for the Kenworth Bullnose and the 1960 Kenworth. Those get honorable mentions. That leaves us to two cats. Two cat pack trucks. There is the Actros and there is the Kenworth. Now here's the thing with the Actros. Really? I mean, really? <laughs> That's a lot of wheels. Um, and the interior is just sort of there. And also, if I remember correctly, somewhere it had... Or did they actually clean it up? That's somewhere it had the badge that showed it as being a Scania, but maybe not. Okay. So what do I think of it? Um, I think it's a decent truck. I would give it an honorable mention. It's going to do its job. It's going to do its job well, but I don't think it's... Look at that. <laughs> they stay on? They do indeed. Um, I think it's going to do the job well. There's nothing that really makes me go, wow, that's a neat truck. Same with that one, really. But that one's at least a solid, solid all-around truck. This one feels like I would really only use it when I have, like, super, super heavy loads. It would not be something that I would just hook a standard 45 to 65,000 liter trailer to. This looks like something that needs to be hauling some serious equipment. So I'm going to give an honorable mention. The Kenworth. You guys know I'm running the Kenworth on my Let's Play. 
couple of reasons I'm running the Kenworth on the Let's Play. Um, one, I love this interior. So I'm trying to get in. I, I, I love the interior. Let's get in the truck. The other thing is, and, and this really... Yes, I can walk through it, but when you hit L and you have your mirrors, I mean, now it becomes like a Euro trucker meets farming sim. And that's really neat. It adds so much to the game to be able to do that. Um, yes, it kills your frame rate in many ca cases. I don't see a terrible frame rate degradation, but my machine is probably a little bit unique in that. Um, so that's really neat. Uh, let's turn that off. And then I can <laughs> tip the cab, which is which is just, you know, it's a neat little feature. It's not really anything amazing. There you go. It also has that neat startup sound. And it has an air brake system where, whereby I have to be careful with the air brakes. It also has the beacons because beacons are important. Now, does that mean the Kenworth is better than the Actros? I'm actually struggling with that right now. If you'd asked me that as purely a what would I use, I would use the Kenworth over the Actros any day. Is it better than the Actros? No, I don't think it is. I think it isn't equal to the Actros. So I gave the Actros an honorable mention. Does that mean I'm going to give the Kenworth an honorable mention? No. It means that they're going to both be elevated up to an award. They're going to supplant the man truck. And the reason they're going to supplant the man truck, the man truck's a great truck. Don't get me wrong. It is doing the slide, but that's this map. It is a great truck. But when you get down to it, one, I love Chrome. That's nice. Um, two, the, the beacons and the, and the extra stuff that really makes it a heavy hauler. But this, this truck, this Kenworth, with the mirrors really for me sets apart this uh, this mod I like that I like I can use the mirrors and driving cab so I'm going to give an award to the Kenworth and the Actros they are going to supplant the man truck as the owner of the semi trophy I'm going to give a mention to all of Duke Farming's trucks the exception of that Kenworth bullnose and this 1960 Kenworth they get honorable mentions. Um, I would love to see the bad, that bull nose sorted and fixed up, but um, even so, I would probably still use it on some farms. So those are both neat trucks. And the rest of them, I, I, if you need them, they're here. All right, so we'll be back with our next mod category. Welcome to the category of mowers. I know some of you are st immediately going, wait a minute, what's that John Deere doing in there? Well, it's sort of a forager, but it's actually a swather, which is basically going to be a mower. <laughs> when it gets right down to it, um, it's just mowing. Uh, doesn't really create chaff the way the foragers do, so that's why it's here. We have the... Uh, um, Cavernlin mower pack, all of those. And then we got these two walk behind mowers. Uh, don't bother award goes to the walk behind mowers. They're crap. Don't bother. There, that's sorted. <laughs> all right, so that leaves the John Deere Swather and the Cavernlin mower pack. Uh, the award goes to the Cavernlin mower pack. I mean, I don't think we need to go split hairs. Uh, it's got the the tar up on it it's got non tar up versions you can mix and match it's just a great little set with a whole bunch of opportunity and a lot of things you can do no reason not to get it it's awesome so it gets the award this John Deere I was like oh this is just like the most awesome thing I'll get this from my LP farm and all that and then I did a little bit more testing there are times where this will cut grass, but not actually produce anything for you to pick up later. Whole swaths of grass that I cut here are on Longcastle, where nothing came out. Uh, same was true of Hagenstadt. I went to Hagenstadt and tried it out. So, 
while it's neat because it's self-propelled, I don't have to have a trailer. It's not neat because it doesn't always work 100%. However, it's very useful. Notice it just started sliding. <laughs> awesome. Um, it's very useful. I'm going to give it an honorable mention because it works. Um, doesn't work every time. However, I'm not 100% sure what causes that. And it could be the, um, the flow of the land, how the land rises and, and dips and things like that. So I'll give it an honorable mention until I have been shown otherwise. So honorable mention for the John Deere. Don't bother for those terrible walk-behind mower things. And the award to the Cavernland Mower Pack. We'll be right back with our next mod category. All right, here we are in the very important combine harvester category. Uh, this was the award winner from season two. It displaced the Cat Lexion, which was the award winner from season one. This is the Class Lexion 770 Terratrack. It had lots of extra goodies. Um, it was it's just an overall very nice harvester. Now this season we had a lot of harvesters because I did a big harvester day. We had a lot of harvesters. <laughs> um, first I wanted to kind of hit on this one. This is an old time harvester. It sort of fits in with the... Um, I'm going to go in here. It kind of fits with the Far MH650. Um, it also sort of fits in with the Potner Mex, um, but at the same time it doesn't because those two are, uh, they create silage or, or chaff out of your corn. It also sort of fits in with the New Holland Clayson, but not at the same time because you get a tractor also, so I, it's a really interesting one. I kind of like it. I think it's really neat, neatly done. Um, it's it's a rust bucket, but what do you expect? Um, a few things just bug me about it. That hitch looks way, way, way too new. Um, the other thing, one, I can clip right through it, but the other thing is how it connects into the tractor. It looks just odd how it just hooks into the tractor like that, because if I detach the tractor... Okay, there's no holes there. This this didn't just like there aren't there aren't attachment points. There aren't true attachment points. And if there were true attachment points to the side of the tractor, the tractor off of here, if there are two true attachment points, it would be so much nicer. But here, you know, you can see there's no attachment point and that one piece just stuck right into that grill. But still, it's a nice Lance Bulldog. It sounds really nice, and it's a neat piece of old equipment. Um, I'm going to give it a honorable mention. I'll give it an honorable mention because most of us aren't using old-time equipment. So if you are using old-time equipment, this is certainly an interesting harvesting mechanism for your farm. All right, enough of the old tractor. Let's talk about the new stuff. So we got the 770 here as the defending champion, and we had a lot of harvesters. So let's kind of run through them all. We had the Case 9120 Axial Flow, and then we had it sibling with the um, treads. Those were a couple of big boys there. Uh, we have, uh, hello, New Holland. <laughs> We have a New Holland that's also pointed backwards. We have the CR9090. We have the Class 160 and the Class 240 Avero. We have the Class 780 TerraTrack. We have the Forskrit E516. We have the Massey Ferguson Sarah. We have the Laverda. And we have the, um, this thing. Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. So, yeah, Ukrainian harvester thing. All right. Um, so it was quite the collection of equipment and quite the collection of quality as well. Um, let's talk about these cases here. Um, so first, the TerraTract one has apparently sanders instead of tracks. Uh, that was a problem from the word go. Uh, the other thing is they kind of waller around. And there's more. 
Now, I didn't realize it because the way that I review the mods, I one shot it, meaning I take a single shot of my mod spotlights. I don't go re digging through the XML before or after. However, I'll give a shout out for to uh, shout out to Duke over at Duke Farming. Uh, I was talking to him about uh, something else, and he was telling me he was so confused that his his semis couldn't pull uh, a trailer with the 770 Terra Track and the case. So he went looking. These things are massively overweighted. Uh, I can't remember the exact figure, but he said they were ridiculously overweight. And then that also caused some of the wallow problem because they're overweight. So there you go. Um, interest, they look nice. They just, they're heavy. Um, that doesn't look nice. But um, here is our new Holland, who is apparently sliding. Um, and I liked it along with the case. The, you know, the nice thing about the case over the new Holland, the new Holland has the straight pipe, just going straight back doesn't have a, a joint in it. The case has a jointed pipe, which is great because it lets me fit it into smaller locations. And I like that. Um, some people were saying it looks the same as those. Well, yeah, because they're one in the same company. They just rebrand. Oh, well. So yeah, um, the new Holland is also a big boy in here. And um, yeah, I, I like the case because of the the bending pipe there, but the one thing I don't like about either of these is just the lack of, of anything extra. or getting spoiled. Uh, I'm going to come back to these Averos here in a moment. Uh, the Massey, the Massey was also a decent harvester. I mean, it, it wasn't something that I would write home about. It wasn't something I would say, wow, this is awesome. It was just a good harvester. It, it did the job I asked it to do. The one thing I don't like is that I can't close the top. I would expect to be able to close that to protect the intricate equipment inside. So there you go. The Laverta. The Laverta was also a decent tractor. Um, it didn't it didn't have like a, a folding unfolding thing to cover my grain. I, again, it was it seemed it felt like it was missing things that I would have liked for it to have. Um, but it was decent. And again, it was uh, there's nothing inherently wrong with the Massey or the Laverta. I just was looking for better. Um, oh, so many things. Uh, the Forescript. Uh, nothing inherently wrong with it. It's it's got extra things, but if you're looking for an old piece of communist era equipment, it will work. It will do the job. And that was the wrong button. Yeah, you want me to start you first? All right, we'll start you first. Um, I love that sound. That sound was the sound of a of a an older tractor. I love the fact that I can open and close the sliding door. I mean, th that's a little thing. Most people be like, meh, but that's neat. Um, I can hit O and look at that. We open up the there, and the pipe comes out. I was I was informed that that is an always out pipe. You fold it out and you leave it out. Um, and you can fold up your little ladder so that you can get that out of the way. So it has a lot of little extras, and those are neat. We like little extras. Um, it is also kind of monolithic in there, but, you know, it's not terrible. Terrible is this thing over here. <laughs> this terror track. Um, look at that. Look at it. And if I go right here, I can see through there. Oof. But it's more than that. By itself... When it's like this, it's going to drive at an appropriate speed. But when I put its head on, it goes 60 miles an hour. Additionally, when I, when I um, put its head on, the head is apparently the world's heaviest 
grain head, and it actually causes this tractor to tip over on its nose, which is kind of a problem. Also, look at what's happening in that tracking. Look at that. I'm not 100% sure that's going to show up on YouTube, but it's it's got this weird, like, unfinished look, um, and that bothers me. So there you go. Um, we don't like that one. I'm not a huge Force Grit fan, so um, I'm not a huge fan of that. The two classes here, they're both small form classes, or medium form, I guess. <clears throat> they don't have a lot of extras on them. They also don't come with a head. And that doesn't sound like a big problem unless you've been watching my Let's Play, where I bought a 160 and bought an in-game head, and because of the contours of the land, it didn't work. Now, again, that could be a conflict that the, it actually comes with a head because I do copy the whole thing over. I don't even look in the file. I just move it. But I would have expected a head. I would have expected to get something out of these. They do require a relatively short head because they don't have a long pipe. So I can't put the, the uh, head off the 770 on either of these two as it is too big. But they are decent little machines. They will get the job done if you can find a head that works. Um, and I do like them. I think they could need, they need some improvement, but they're not terrible. 780 Terra Truck. It is basically the 770 with uh, extra, t extra digit change, really. Um, it's bigger. Uh, it runs the same head as the 770. It has a few extra features, like the 770... Has some features, but this, I love the fan. Watch the fan on the back. I'll start this guy up. Look at that. I mean, that's awesome. I love this smoke effect too, because when it's just idling, it's that, but when I tell it to get going, I had a nice black diesel smoke coming out of there. I like that as well. Um, getting inside, I've got my IC for everything I need. Um, it is in foreign language, so those of you that don't want to just click around and figure stuff out, uh, stick with the 770. But it's, I mean, it's relatively simple. I mean, that is the cameras right there. Um, that's pipe right there, and this is something. <laughs> I'm not sure which. Um, but there you go. Uh, that is a 780. Okay. Now, let's talk about where these sit. We gave, we gave this an honorable mention. So where do the rest of these here sit? Well, if it wasn't obvious from the get-go, I'm going to give a dishonorable mention to this uh, Ukrainian blue bomber here. Um, yeah, it needs a lot of TLC to make it functional. So just avoid it on principle unless you really need a Ukrainian piece of equipment and you can deal with its, its various issues. It is sort of a stunt vehicle when you put the head on it. The Force Grit, I'm going to give it a mention. I'm not a big... You know what, actually, no, I'm going to give it an honorable mention. It has a lot of extras. I was going to give it just a mention, but then I remembered, oh, it's got all these extras on it. And I like extras. So we're going to give it an honorable mention. Um, it's not terrible. It's not going to break everything and it works it's functional if you're looking for a force script that is the force script for you i'm going to give the massey and the laverta i think i'm going to give them mentions and and here's why i'm going to give them mentions because there's really nothing to write home about there's nothing that makes me go wow this is an awesome harvester it's just a harvester and they're big harvesters, so they're in competition against the 770. The 770 beats these guys down in terms of functionality and ability. So, mention. The mention also goes... Hmm, yeah, no. Uh, See, it's things like this that make you just go, huh. Now, I'm going to leave them out of mention. I'm going to leave, I'm going to put these guys, New Holland in the case, also as mentions. Um, the New Holland does wallow a little bit. It doesn't really have a lot of extras going for it. The cases are overweight 
Um, also not a lot of extras and have sandpaper wheels on that. These two classes, um, I'm also just going to give them mentions. I mean, quite honestly, I don't care enough. They don't have heads. They need a head because using the in-game head is no guarantee you're actually going to be able to functionally perform the tasks that you've asked them to do. They worked here at Longcastle because Longcastle's fields are generally flat. As soon as we went to Red Hill, that 160 didn't work because the Red Hill farm has a very curved and undulated uh, field structure. So I'm just going to give them mentions, put heads with them, and maybe give them a little bit of IC and we can talk. Uh, but there you go. So that really, in the end, all of those pieces of equipment... That Ukrainian blue bomber is a dishonorable mention. The forest grid is an honorable mention. Everybody else, just a mention. Until we get to the 780. Now I got the 780 versus the 770. Well, let's think about this. 780 has better smoke graphics. It has a cool little fan thing. Other than that, the two are pretty much similar in terms of appearances and looks. They run the same head, so you're just going to use the same head. $10,000 difference. 12.85 versus 13.85. So you get 1,000 extra liters on the 780 for $10,000. Am I going to pay $10 a liter? You know, I actually would. And here's why. I would pay the $10 a liter because when it comes down to it, as there's actually, you know, there, there's really no, there's, you can't lose. You take the 770 or the 780, you're not going to lose. They're going to use the same head, so they're completely interchangeable. Um, one is just slightly bigger than the other and slightly more expensive. Other than that, they're pretty much carbon copies of each other. So the 780 is going to get an award. The 770 is going to keep its an award. So they're going to be co-award winners to 770 and 780 Terra Tracks. So there you go. Co-award winners again. <laughs> so there we have the co-award winners of the class 770, 780. We have an honorable mention for this, this silly little lance because it's a neat thing. An honorable mention for the force grid and... Dishonorable mention for that Ukrainian blue bomber and a mention for everything else. All right, we'll be back in our next mod category.